the little yep. That's diesel. This is what I get. <laughs> so, I got my nice cylinder lines out of my 82 Buick Sabre. And I saw one of the lines was shooting out. Obviously, the rear master, the rear part of the master for the rear brakes was very low. It's rotted, obviously, in this bracket. But the more I started looking at it, I'm like, wait a minute, the front brakes, or was it the rear? The rear, the, the rear brakes have the big line. And I could swear it was coming out of the skinny line, which is for the front brakes. But, you know, it's not always the case. It made sense because I was low on fluid. I would think I would be you know, low on fluid on the other one. Oh, yeah. Right there. That's the hole. Funny, the big line is the one that rotted, and that's why it threw me a curveball there. I was like, gee, was I working on a low rear master cylinder and the front master cylinder? You know, but this one here, even though it's in ultimately really good shape, it's not in good shape right there. And I had a feeling that, like, one pounce of the brake... If I needed a panic stop because I only had half my brakes, I knew that was going to blow any any second, pretty much. That's crazy. That's so crazy how that works. And these things always do it. These 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 clips, you know. They they store rust. They store water. Now I gotta find a way to change this. I got thinner line for this also, but it's hard to bend uh, the quarter inch line, you know. Oh boy, always something. But there's no problem with using the, the thin line. It, the fluid is incompressible. It would just be a certain temperature, but this, this car ain't a race car. But that's, that's what I'm up against. I gotta make these lines now. I bought all the adapters too, but it's very tight in there on the proportioning valve side. So I'm not quite sure which way I'm going to go yet. You know, this this is a bendable thing here, but I, you got to put the adapters or I got to resplice them. So I'll, I'll decide in a few what I'm going to do. Pull the way up. That's diesel. This is what I get. <laughs> I have four brand new ties for the car. I had no time to install them. I got them on Sunday in the mail, and then I get it flat. I put the donut on. It's too flat. Of course, I was in the middle of exits. By the time I got off the exit, I couldn't find any air. And this is what happens. What? This guy has no tires now. He had one tire, and it's a 15, and it's actually fitting. <laughs> Almost ready to go. Their last wrench has uh, bit the dust. It's just stripped and ratchets up to that point, and then it just it won't unscrew. Good Bosch. These are very good. Supposedly they have the auto shut off and everything, but it, it's not even a weld. They just tack it. They, they get it hot, and it just melts itself to it. You put the, the socket on, you could break one off, which I did already, and now this is the second one where I just tried to put on the connector, and it just fell right off. Not good. It made in France too. I don't know if it's good or bad, but not happy. I only have a flux core welder at the moment, but of course you get scared when you're trying to weld it and it moved over to the side, but that shouldn't be a big deal. But uh, that's a weld at least, you know, as long as it can handle it. And I, I jumped the other one and it works, so I assume this one will too, but I'll jump it anyway. That's not fair. They don't even put a, any kind of good weld on it. It's like they put a lot of technology in the, whoops, that's hot, put a lot of technology in the um, uh, glow plug itself, but they put like the same glow plug in several different vehicles, and they just put a different end on it, and then they don't put a lot of technology into trying to make that end correct. It's, just, it's really not. It's, it's too flimsy. So the one that I fixed originally, I put it on the front one here because it's easy, but then I found myself... Welding another one, and now I do the back one, and I had to weld this one as well. It's so much better, because I, I actually put a vice grip on it and try to move it, and it don't move. This this little cheap uh, thing that they do here is, is horrible. You know, I don't see how that 
really makes a good connection. And the thing is, is like I thought maybe the old ones were better because they held up, but I actually busted a bunch of them off. And accidentally, one of these came off. This is the one I put on the new one. Because when I looked on the ground, I found this one with the, with the thing off. So now I broke off the other one. I took the original one and I put it on there. But these actually hold better, these, uh, these ones with a the little hole there. Um, but you can see, they do the same thing. There is like a tiny weld-looking thing right there, though. This fucking auto light does it a little bit better. These are 10 millimeter, as opposed to the 3 eighths that the other ones are. You know. But, uh, I'm like, do I tack each one? But I'd rather not at this point. But, you know, they're somewhat accessible, except for the last one there. It's pretty rough. But it's like, gee, do I bother? I mean, the other ones didn't fall off. However, I wasn't, I wasn't counting on them actually making that good of a connection because it was rough starting, but it could have been just the injectors. But you see what happens here? All that turns rusty. I'm not sure about the Bosch. That even looks better, you know, and that's why it was funny like there's a hole here Whereas the the ones for this doesn't have a hole and so I said I put the wrong one on the other one first And that's when I realized it and then I found one on the floor when I was looking for a bolt I dropped and um, I found the original one so that one is somewhere down the, the other one is somewhere down there <sighs> it's Frustrating it's frustrating you expect these things to uh, to make a good connection no matter what the brand. I mean, that looks pretty pretty horrible to me. But it's like, I really didn't want to mess with them terribly much, you know. But uh, sometimes uh, yeah, you got to make a decision. Um, oh, by the way, I took Harbor Freight washers, their kit. And I put them on a bolt, and I tightened them up, and I grinded them down. It really wasn't grinding them perfectly, and I ruined the set. Then I did another set, and I tried to make it more even. It really wasn't working 100%. And I took my little whiz, uh, my uh, sanding, you know, the little disc, you know, and uh, I cleaned up because it was doing more on one edge than the other. So I cleaned them up, and I got them to the right size. I think I know the PAR number is 725011 in Dorman, where you get a package of 50 of them. But I can't get that now, and I want to get this over with. So, that's that. So, just be weary. I would just tack weld it if it's the back one. The other ones are pretty accessible. It's not really that big of a deal, I think, you know. So, uh, it is what it is. But these are the better inject, yeah, these are the better glow plugs, supposedly. I just, I just don't like what they do there for, for putting it on. Uh, I, I don't see why they just don't use the threaded part here, this thing that holds it together, this brass thing, and put like a 90 degree thing on it somehow, you know, kind of silly. Oh well. got the third one in. I don't know if it's going to fall off when I try to put the plug on, but I broke the next one and then I just welded this one. That little tack makes a huge difference. They're not really putting it on properly, you know. Of course, when it's, you know, misaligned, you know, that, that was the time for me to weld it is when it's still together. It came out much better. But it'll be fine. So, of course, the third one, it ended up breaking off. Once I tried to put the wire on, that was okay. But when I tightened the uh, the injector, it, it just barely fit. Just, just fell right off. These are horrible. The only reason why I guess it didn't fall off on this side... Other than that one, but somehow, uh, I think I did the last one as well. So it was more than one. The two middle ones, it just it was just so much easier to get in, you know. There was just no no bindage with the uh, ratchets and whatnot. I'm using a power ratchet, but there's no reason why I can't. So um, it makes it a lot, job a lot easier. Uh, but that being said, um, it's, not, it's not hitting anything. It's not when I pull it out. It's just the vibration from the machine. You know, it, it ends up breaking it loose, but, you know, once I put this on, I'm, I'm, I'm played with it. it, it don't fall off. Like, literally, you just push on the ones that are, you know, and granted, these have lasted. These are, like, better because that's actually a hole. I accidentally welded one of these onto the Bosch, that first one that broke. And, uh, 
That's just insane. It really is. That's so unfair. I'm really griping about this. <laughs> oh well. Tack weld them. You'd be better off if you used a Bosch. Alright, so what I did before, I did four injectors on this side and four glow plugs. At that point, I, um, I started it up, you know. It was not that easy to start up, but it did start up just by turning the key. And it was like you're running on four of them. So I'm gonna, now, that's my advice. Like, you run it on four while the other four are bled out. If you do all eight, you're gonna have a hard time starting it. So now the four are bled on this side, the other side might go a lot easier. So we'll see. Basically what I did before. Hoping next time it starts without all this blue smoke. Actually, it's running way better. This thing used to shake like crazy. Much smoother now. Very good. This should start right. These were the injectors for the 85 the older wheels, and the problem with that is that they work on lower pressure. And I thought I would get better mileage from it. I thought that's why they did it, but they actually lowered the pressure in it. So that was like five years ago. I've only put like 3,000 miles on this car in five years, but that's way better. Okay, so if I shut it off. I don't know if the glow plug light's gonna come on. It's only like 60 degrees, but uh. I guess the ultimate test would be to um, start it when it cools off a bit. Because then the glow plug light will go on. So, that's basically it. There might be something wrong with the duration of the um, glow plugs as well. We're cutting out too soon. This engine I put in uh, in 2018, it was a good wrench engine, but the injector pump was uh, swapped out on it. The guy just threw like the old one from somebody, you know, harvested the, the injector pump. I never felt this motor was like great, but with bad injectors, it's very hard to tell. Also, if, if I'm, you know, using up a lot of fuel when I first start it, because basically I, I felt that the because the injector pressure was wrong it had to warm up in order for that to uh, to work because the first time I actually drove it and floored it I guess it created a vacuum in the system because the demand I was flooring it to pass someone and then it bent the push the push rod you know the, the arm for the uh, fuel pump and I ended up putting an, an old, a new old stock Carter one that had the little piece of metal on the arm to help support it and give a wear surface, you know? So I feel this is, uh, this was part of the problem, the injectors, so. I guess it's not running as good as I, hoped, but it doesn't really go into the, the high idle mode anymore. I've never really investigated it, you know. Hopefully none of these injectors are, well these injectors, it might have an air in them, I don't know. It's hard to say without really test driving it, but it was smoother before, just a minute ago. Stinking up everywhere. I gotta be careful.
it sounds quieter. It literally does, like the diesel noise ain't, ain't so pronounced. So, that's it. Meanwhile, I'm always in the state of trying to find, quote unquote, you know, making quotes with my fingers, something. Here we go. I found the broken one that I have. I bought a package of five of these things for the, you know, for the tubing bender. And, uh, I, I can't find them. It's so frustrating. But I just, I just busted that thing off. I was just trying to bend it back. Of course, it's hardened, but that's why it's not going to bend. It just breaks, but I was thinking that maybe it was in my, my old car. And, like, all these tools are under the, this car still. So if I find it, I find it. But, like, I'm like, I can't believe I didn't use it yet. You know, like, I just... I can't remember. I have good intentions when I buy shit. I need something. I fucking buy it right away. And then... Then I can't find it. But, oh, well. So I just want to make a quick video about a GM ball joint. See the, the, the upper ball joint here with the rivets? What I do is I take a grinder and I grind the heads of the... Um, you know, the, the rivets there. Now, you really... Can't quite see the outline. Sometimes you can actually see the rivet. And I don't know if I showed this with the uh, cutlass video I had of doing the springs and the uppers, but if you use a air hammer with this straight poker hooya, see, look at that. I just I just hit it a little bit, and I think you can start seeing the outline there. It's better with two hands. Just to show you, might have not. Oh, that's nice. I did it on the. I'm actually not in the center. Right, I'm on the other side. But now you can see the circle taking shape there. Too much of a mess. I can better to start, you know. Sheesh. I keep missing. Terrible at making videos. I don't know if you noticed. Better at doing comedy. And so on and so forth. It's, it's you know, like I said, if you grind more, you'll get more. So like right here, because everything has been moved, this thing looks like it's exposed. This one. Well, he just loves to jump off on me. I did the other control arm already. I did, you know, the bushings and everything. And, uh... Yeah. Uh, 
other than ringing your bell, you know, with the noise. Right there, I didn't grind it as much as the other one. Here we go, on the floor where all the rest of the mess is. And then I can get to, I can actually make a video with the bushings too. They really weren't hard, but ultimately I just use an air hammer for everything. I don't even heat them. Every time I heat them, I seem to give myself more headache, you know? So, let's see if I decide to make a video of that. But I just wanted to show that for the main part. To me, that's really easy. It's also better, see right now it's basically on the rubber because it's in this vise and the table is not that sturdy, so it vibrated a bit. But on the car, it's very solid if you just had to do just this, you know. But I'm doing the, um, let me just show you. I've been working on this car. I did the rear springs and shocks. I did all the brakes in the rear. I just did all the brake lines as well. I'm going to do the calipers. I'm going to do the front brake hoses. And as you can see, I took everything out. I got to find a set of springs I thought I had for this car. You can see I made all new lines. And, um gonna ride nice uh, I got every I, it's amazing because I found all the front end parts I had all brand new parts that I had bought and uh, I double checked all the part numbers I got a big load of parts on the floor here also working on this Honda Odyssey at the same time I took out the steering blocks because I couldn't get the control arm out without moving the shearing shaft out of the way so I took it off I'm like yeah I don't know do I change the fucking the seal's on it because it doesn't look like it wasn't leaking. It doesn't look like it's pouring, but it doesn't look like it's nothing. I did buy a new power steering pump because of the Hydro Boost brakes. I really wasn't satisfied with it. And I had, I, I always had relatively shitty brakes on this car. And these Hydro Boost, I had, I had two other cars just like this, and the Hydro Boost was like unbelievable. And this car, it's not. And the reason why I think of that is because I've changed everything. I'm going to change the hoses now. And I'm going to change the pump because I kind of don't trust it. Because the belt keeps getting loose, and that's part of the problem. And I just feel like there's a certain amount of resistance when the pump gets old and there's dirty fluid in it and whatnot. So it may help to also, you know, drain and get the dirt out of the, uh, the thing, too. I'm having a hell of a time with the um, tires. I got three of them mounted. The last one is, oh, my God. These, these tires, they, when they manufacture them, they're so tight. But these, these rims are very big, so I put these three... These three canisters inside empty uh, CLR things, and I'm bulging out the tire just to hope that it grabs the bead. I'm using a one of those uh, air tanks, and the air tank usually works. Sometimes you got to do it two or three times. That little yellow thing there, and it blows you back, and it's just like it's not easy to keep it still. I, I, I really wish that the, you know these machines make tire mounting so easy. But not the tire beating. It's horrible. Now these are very wide rims. They're seven inch rims for these things. And you know, you can see how these are already out because they're old. But uh man, uh I don't think I'm ever gonna put uh 75s on these kind of rims again. I would put 70s at best. I think I'd have an easier time. But they, they fill up the rim just fine. But it's the old school tire machines like I used to have it used to put air into the, um, you know, from the bottom at this, you know, a big rush of air. Boy, that's so much easier. But what a pain in the fucking ass. Anyway, this is one of the control arms I did. New bolts, new bushings. And I gotta do the lowers, then I gotta find a set of springs. I know I have them somewhere. Can't find them yet. Thought I had them at my house, apparently not. So, uh, I got a lot of shit to go through. <laughs> Alright, that's enough for this video. Thanks for watching. So I just want to make a quick video about a GM ball joint. See the, the, the upper ball joint here with the rivets? What I do is I take a grinder and I grind the heads of the, um, you know, the, the rivets there. Now, you really can't quite see the outline. Sometimes you can actually see the rivet. And... I don't know if I showed this with the uh, cutlass video I had of doing the springs and the uppers, but if you use a air hammer with this straight poker hoo-ya. Mm -hmm. See, look at that. I just, I just hit it a little bit, and I think you can start seeing the outline there. Uh, it's 
better with two hands. Just to show you, might have not, oh that's nice, I did it on the, I'm actually not in the center. Wait, I'm on the other side. But now you can see the circle taking shape there. Kind of wants to go back and it's keeps jumping in the holes that I made already. Ultimately, you want to get in the middle. Much better with two hands. makes it easy. I know I just made it hard by not getting the center, but if you grind more, you usually see the outline of the rivet. See, you can see it right there. And I didn't make too much of a mess. I can... Better to start, you know, Sheesh, I keep missing. Terrible at making videos, I don't know if you noticed. Better at doing comedy. Boom. And so on and so forth. It's, it's, you know, like I said, if you grind more, you'll get more. So like right here, because everything has been moved, this thing looks like it's exposed. This one. Well, he just loves to jump off on me. I did the other control arm already. I did, you know, the bushings and everything. And, uh... Yeah. And that, uh... <laughs> Other than ringing your bell, you know, with the noise. See right there, I didn't grind it as much as the other one. There we go, on the floor where all the rest of the mess is. And then I can get to, I can actually make a video with the bushings too. They really weren't hard, but ultimately I just use an air hammer for everything. I don't even heat them. Every time I heat them, I seem to give myself more headache, you know, so. Let's see if I decide to make a video of that. But I just wanted to show that for the main part. To me, that's really easy. It's also better. See, right now it's basically on the rubber because it's in this vise and the table is not that sturdy. So it vibrated a bit. But on the car, it's very solid if you just had to do just this, you know. But I'm doing the, um, let me just show you. I've been working on this car. I did the rear springs and shocks. I did all the brakes in the rear. I just did all the brake lines as well. I'm going to do the calipers, I'm going to do the front brake hoses, and as you can see, I took everything out. i got to find a set of springs I thought I had for this car. You can see I made all new lines, and um, it's going to ride nice. Uh, I got every, I, it's amazing because I found all the front end parts, I had all brand new parts that I had bought, and uh, double checked all the part numbers, I got a big load of parts on the floor here. Also working on this Honda Odyssey at the same time. I took out the steering box because I couldn't get the control arm out without moving the shearing shaft out of the way. So I took it off. I'm like, ah, I don't know. Do I change the fucking the seals on it? Because it doesn't look like it wasn't leaking. It doesn't look like it's pouring, but it doesn't look like it's nothing. I did buy a new power steering pump because of the Hydro Boost brakes. I really wasn't satisfied with it. 
and I had I, I always had relatively shitty brakes on this car and these hydro boost I had a, I had two other cars just like this and the hydro boost was like unbelievable and this car it's not and the reason why I think of that is because I've changed everything I'm gonna change the hoses now and I'm gonna change the pump because I kind of don't trust it because the belt keeps getting loose and that's part of the problem and I just feel like there's a certain amount of resistance when the pump gets old and there's dirty fluid in it and whatnot. So it may help to also, you know, drain and get the dirt out of the, uh, the thing too. I'm having a hell of a time with the um, tires. I got three of them mounted. The last one is, oh my God. These, these tires, they, when they manufacture them, they're so tight. But these, these rims are very big. So I, I put these three, these three canisters inside empty uh, CLR things and I'm bulging out the tire. Just to hope that it grabs the bead. I'm using a one of those uh, air tanks and the air tank usually works sometimes you got to do it two or three times that little yellow thing there and it blows you back and it's just like it's not easy to keep it still I, I, I really wish that the, you know these machines make the tire mounting so easy but not the tire beating it's horrible now these are very wide rims they're seven inch rims for these things and you know you can see how these are already out because they're old but uh Man, uh, I don't think I'm ever going to put uh, 75s on these kind of rims again. I would put 70s at best. I think I'd have an easier time. But they, they fill up the rim just fine. But it's the old school tire machines like I used to have. It used to put air into the, um, you know, from the bottom at this, you know, a big rush of air. Boy, that's so much easier. But what a pain in the fucking ass. Anyway, this is one of the control rooms I did. The new bolts. New bushings. And I gotta do the lowers. Then I gotta find a set of springs. I know I have them somewhere. Can't find them yet. Thought I had them at my house. Apparently not. So, uh, I got a lot of shit to go through. <laughs> All right. That's enough for this video. Thanks for watching. So, it helps if you have a socket. Uh, first of all, I use the, I just use the uh, air chisel back and forth. You get under the lip. You kind of go straight in. Straight into the bushing. And it starts to lift it out, and then you start going on your angles, and you just keep walking it back. You know, out. It, it, both bushings took me five minutes to remove. So with this one, I was starting to wail it uh, with the big socket, and you basically you hook it there on your vise. You don't really have to clamp it down, but um, just a, uh, it's a little hard for me to hold this. Uh, I don't know if that's going to work. All right. How about, I hate getting on camera, I hope it doesn't turn off, that would suck, but ultimately, put your big socket on, you have it in here, and the camera's going to fall, and uh, one day I'm going to get a tripod, something like that, and a couple of more shifts. Information out there, probably. But you basically, you you hold the edge here, because the other thing I used to do is put, you know, a socket on the top, socket on the bottom, put it on this part of the flat part of the vise, and start wailing it. And the problem with that is that this starts to bend. So every time you hit it, you got to kind of go up, and it doesn't really bend, bend, but it it tweaks, and it makes it hard for the thing, you know, you know, for the bushing to go in. It's it's hard. So it's I find it's much more effective to just go on the edge of the. Uh, Vice like this. I don't know if that's all the way in yet. This side, yeah, it's all the way in because it has those little dimples in the uh, bushing. So I'm going to try to hit it one more time. Like for some reason, this one has the dimples, but it's kind of more almost flush. Well, basically, that's how deep the dimples are. You know, there's no this this part of the control arm comes out, so that's pretty much that's pretty much in. It made a different sound, but you see how quick that you know that went in. All right, and then um, let me just let me just put the phone down for a second. Let me just hit it a couple more times. Two more times. So, so I want to make sure that's correct. Putting it in the vise by the mounting point.
Bear with me. Okay. So, I use a chaser. So, I already did it. Because sometimes also when you hit it, when you try to hit it out, sometimes you catch threads. Not a good thing, obviously. You don't want to try to do that, but I did it on the first one. What is it, about a year since I did it on my other car? My, my cutlass? A little bit, a little bit more than a year. So basically, when you when you tighten these, when you install it in the car, you don't want these to be all the way tight because you really want to get the car down on its four wheels. And while it's down, that is when it's like I can't walk and chew gum for some reason. Why aren't you catching very well? Sometimes some nuts want to go where they originally were. I think I accidentally, yeah, I kind of screwed the re-threader on crooked accidentally. And I started going down on it and I re-put re it through though, so I figured it would be fine. Oh, there we go. I'm just an idiot. Okay. Okay, so... So, you know, ultimately, yeah, you want it all the way tight. And I like to, you know, bring it in all the way. Okay, but I back it off. And let's see. Okay, see how this moves? I'm moving the whole control arm. Okay, that's what you want. Because when you, what happens is you... I know it'll probably slip eventually, but it's really not not wanting to do that. And then when you start cranking these down, it may slip afterwards. But, you know, if you want to get it alignment right away, it's much better to leave these loose, get the car on the ground. I mean, even drive it around a block once. And that way, when it sets a certain level, while it's on the ground, you go open the hood and you tighten these from the top. Maybe you can get in from the wheel well because if your springs are taller at that point. But ultimately, that's what you want. Like, if, if you install polyurethane bushings, these things, no matter how tight you make it, it keeps, keeps moving. It's great. You know, it's very good range of motion. That's the only time you don't really need to do it because they have the range of motion, you know. Whether or not that helps in the long run, you know. Um, for cornering and stuff and for wearing, for wearing them out. Polyurethane can go bad, I gather. I've seen them get dry, like really dry. But not the energy suspension. I got There was some other brand, you know, but like a body-bound bushing. But it's the same idea in a certain sense, but a little harder on this. So that being said, that's the way. If you put a rubber bushing in, you don't make it all the way tight. I would tighten it all the way to make sure, you know, your threads aren't fucked up and all this and that. Get it all the way tight, set the bushing, and then tighten it when you go uh, back on the ground. Because then it'll find the center that it needs to be. And that way, when you're actually driving, when everything is all said and done, it'll be somewhat in the center, and then it has its rain, range of motion. There's only so much range of motion you're going to get out of rubber, you know? And right now, it's moving because the shaft is actually loose. And that's what you want. So, that's my point. All right? Thanks for watching. All right, so this was pretty much the worst experience ever trying to get these bushings in I actually was trying to use something the same size and it actually cupped it a bit I, I think it's flat for the most part I'm not really worried about it but man I had the worst time I don't know if it's just extra thick but I swear I think I'm gonna buy the ready-made you know control arms you know you think you save a few bucks and you kill yourself and ultimately what you see here is what I did uh, I could not get it to go any other way. I basically put something over there. So I basically put something over here. And I put something over here. And I loaded it up. And then, you know, so I loaded it up with the gun. Which is what, how it's not at now. And then I would take this. Like I just have, I just had a little tiny bit that was not, um, seated all the way. Uh, yeah, you see that? That's not seated all the way, and I don't even know if this is going to work.
Did I get it? Yeah, I got it. See? That's my eyes were just playing with me, but it was just a tiny bit on this side. But ultimately, that's how I did it. Is I would load it up, because it didn't really want to go. And you see, I made all these marks and everything on the inside. See right there? That was the only way to do it. It got so, you know, bent out of shape, but, you know, no pun intended, that uh, it just didn't want to go back in. You know, uh, it's, it's, <laughs> that was the crazy, like the G-bodies, they don't, I don't think it's this nearly this thick, and I did a 78, this is only an 82. You would think a lot of the quality is worse, but, um, you know, ultimately, uh, hang on. Yeah, keep shutting my phone off accidentally. But ultimately, you can see, now it's flat all the way around. This one definitely came out better than this one. Not much I can do. And I keep, oh God, what a horrible day today. I kept losing everything. That's just the thickness of the, can't see without reading glasses. Yeah, it's, it may be out just a hair, but... I really can't undo it, you know. It's my car. Uh, I'm not terribly worried. It's in there. But it almost, I almost thought the things were too too fat. You know, the, the bushings are too fat. But that was a pretty horrible experience. But now that I have an idea where I'm going, the other arm probably won't be nearly as bad to deal with, I think. Um, had a hard time getting them out. But much harder time getting them in. And I'm very surprised. Usually... Uh, you can have a hell of a time get, trying to get them out. And uh, going in, it's almost like they go in too easy. You know, I've had to tack weld them in because the... the uh, but here's the thing. is like I've always just forced them in. And they go in, and then this starts to bend a little bit. And you just go pop, pop, pop. You know, whether you do it with a hand chisel and a, and a hammer or the air chisel. And it didn't even want to get started. Like, I'm sitting there wailing on it. Big socket, forcing it in, forcing it in, forcing it in. It fucking, I, I'm like, I was doing it like for 10 minutes. And I, I lifted up the control arm. I'm like, okay, I think I got it started. Poof, it just fell right out. Boom. Fell right out. Worst experience ever. Uh, don't know if I'll film anything from the other one because I, I'm, actually, I'm absolutely fucking living hell today. Nothing went right with this. Wasted all day to, to press those things in. I still got the last control arm to do. But the big problem was the tire. I still can't get the tire on. I left it out in the sun. And it just doesn't want to catch. And I lost the fucking the air chuck. And man, uh, I am, I've had it. Rotten, rotten day. Nothing went right. It would help if I worked cleaner. I'd probably find shit. But I'm like, this. the only place I could have dropped it is near the, uh, the tire machine. So... That being said, I'm going to go to the other control arm, just see if I can finish it today. That way, at least all I have to do is install it, and then, of course, i got to do the ball drain, but that should be cut and dry with the ball drain press. This was the day from hell. The other control arm here, as you can see, I got this new one in. Same procedure, once I had it rigged up, it went in easy, but that one, that's, that's the one you saw on the ground. This other side, the big side, that guy came right out. That wasn't so bad. So I guess just you have some trouble with some control arms and not so much with others. But I, I must have really whacked the hell out of it where these things were out of sync on the other one or something. My only problem is, though, as you can see, I only put in one because the box of bushings that I had is a 6109. But apparently it's the other. There's, there's two ways to buy these. You buy them per control arm, which is one big one, one smaller one. Or you buy them two small ones or two big ones. So now i got to buy a box of the two big ones. So I have a set for this. For one control arm that somebody else, obviously, I don't have anybody to change it on, but why waste it? And uh, so it'll give me a pair of the bigger ones locally, and it's cheaper that way. Otherwise, they want a lot of money. Well, they don't want a lot of money. They want, uh, I mean, if you buy the Moog one, that's 38 bucks. It's like $17.99 for the, for the set. Since I have this already, I just assume, why buy another set when I'm going to have, you know, it's not really right. So I'm going to buy the rearward bearing, uh, bushing. That way it has that, and then I'll have another set. I'll put it back in this box. Oh, 
What a day. And then I had a friend come and help me with the tire. Still couldn't do it. And of course, I still misplaced the chuck. Can't find it. Now I'm going to go buy another one, apparently. Because I don't have time to waste. Uh, unbelievable. So I, I put the three, those three gallon containers in here, stretching the hell out of this tire again. I don't know what else to fucking do. I even filled it with brake cleaner and lit it on fire, and all it did was make me fucking gasp for air. <laughs> I think you have to use ether. Um, I, I, this is crazy. Crazy how I got it done on three tires. And the third one, you know, I had left it like this with two, two gallons overnight. And uh, I first try, it went on. So I don't know if it's just about being overnight or what. But, uh... Oh, I thought leaving it in the sun would help. But it's the sidewalls are so heavy that they sink down. It's the way they manufacture it. But, I mean, I gather it's better for a 15 by 6 rim instead of a 15 by 7 with these Buick rims that are the wide ones, uh, I'm never going to put this size again. I'm just going to put the, um, uh, what do you call it? I'm going to put the uh, the 70s on at the very least. 235 70s or something like that. Well, I won't be so ridiculously tall. It's more money, you know, for those tires. And I went cheap. And I, and I like these tires. You see what happens is the car sits a long time. And if you look at the, the load rating on these things, you know, uh, the max maximum load is 2,000 pounds per tire. So when you get a, a 215.75, which is what this car normally came with, but apparently it must have came with a wider tire, then, then again, the, the other tire would probably be easier to put on. That being said, uh, it's like a little over 1,000, like 1,200 Maybe it goes to fifteen hundred. You know, when I let these cars sit, they get flat spots on them sometimes, but not on the my other car that I have two these big two thirty fives on. They don't, you know, because it it out. You know, even though the car is like six thousand, oh, not six thousand, four over four thousand pounds, it's double the amount for the tires. You know, altogether four wheels is you know it holds up the weight better. So that's my philosophy on that. So, being that I let them sit for so long, you know, these cars don't really get a lot of use. But when I use them, I'll use them a lot. Like, I used this car for five days the other day, you know, so the last week, and now I'm, like, just tearing into it. And like I said, I had all these parts for it, but apparently, one bushing is wrong. Um, I... I found this, yeah, over there I had this set of, uh, what did I grab here? Oh, that's, this is going to be the lower ball joints. Yeah, I'm going to grab these. I'm pretty sure these are the, um, tie rod sleeves. That, that's the one thing I didn't have, uh, by me on the other side of the garage. This is originally meant for another car, but I'm pretty sure it's the same one. I'll double check that, but... Oh, I just tell you, it never fucking ends. Never. What a fucking day. This was a horrible day. Oh my god. How many air chucks do I have here? <laughs> I bought some pretty cheap air chucks through my times, and I'm like, I thought I bought good ones, and they don't hold. The last one that I bought, it actually holds on. These things don't hold. Oh my god, I can't believe I had extra chucks. I was looking for them too, and I just happened to... <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, this is not the one I was using today. I could sure assure you of that. But I, 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 I just, like I said, I think I've tried to use these and they just absolutely fucking suck. And I'm like, fuck this. And I, and I tell you, the old time machine, I had the original one that came with it. It was probably 50 years old, and it was a little loose, but it, it, I think it worked better <laughs> than any of these. So I don't expect these to work very well, but. In desperation, I gather I'll oh I will try it. Um, seems to hold. I forgot what the problem was. Now I kind of fucked this all up because I was just dumping on the fucking the, uh, the what do you call it? I was putting the air thing directly on it. Couldn't fucking hold it. What a fucking disaster. You know when everything goes fucking wrong, man, I, I, I tell you, like, it, 
couldn't have gone any worse today. And it's amazing that I got, eh, it still threads on. It's a new valve. I'm not really worried. Um, but yeah, these have been sitting. They got the rust. The other one was brand new. Huh. There goes the fucking... <laughs> See what I mean? Like all day today. My friend stopped by. He couldn't get the license plate screws off and they were nuts. I went to go grab a nut driver and, and like 18 things fell out of my toolbox. And um, that's just how some days go. You just curse more some days. And look at this. I just moved this and it's not here. I move it back. Insanity. This is all day today. Can you believe this shit? Oh, there it is. But, <laughs> look, it goes so much further away than it needs to go. Ah, oh, that was the other... This one I, I can't win. Today was bad. My God, if you ever had a bad day, if, you ha if there was a live stream of me going, man, I don't know who I didn't curse. Ah, oh, oh well. Some days you win, some days you lose. I just keep, I just don't quit. I keep going. Next thing I know, it's after 8 o'clock. So, now, now I think it's done. Because now I start to affect other people if I keep using the air hammer. But, not that I, I, I did just use it now just to finish off that bearing, uh, bushing. But, uh, that will be the end of the, uh, the day, end of the video. Thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for looking at my trials and tribulations. Oh, look at this. I, I dropped one of these clips. That's not good. The other one almost fell off. Look at this. It just doesn't end. Where am I going to find that clip? I hate using, like, aftermarket clips for those things. But, like, me moving it around and trying to jig it up here, you know. So I hope to find that fucker. That's another fucking problem. I hate that. I mean, I hate that they come off so easily, but, you know, like, I, I shouldn't have had all the trouble I had today. <sighs> More... More headache. Yep. I'll be lucky to find that, but it really, sh you know, I came over here with it on. I know that for a fact. So it should be in this area, but that's what I said about the air chuck, too. Unreal. Anyhow, now that's the end. I give up. It's a bad day. As you see, I got a new bushing, and I started whacking it in, started bending this. Right now I have it loaded up with that gun. I swapped the air hose to this, and then when you put it in, see how it just jumps right in? That's pretty much how you do it. You can see the whole thing bent. It's just flexed. Not really bent, but in case, I could probably go a little harder on this as well. You can see the whole thing actually moves and it uh, recenters itself. This doesn't help, but this is not on target, so that's another thing. But I gotta have two hands, but I just wanted to make a video. You can see how it all. The whole thing is sliding out now. I gotta re reposition it. But you got the idea. That's. That's how you get it in. Um, a lot of hard time with these, as I said on the last video. But uh, hopefully this hole will go in. The only thing i got to do is find the springs, and i still got to get that tire on. Oh, well. I don't know if I'll make another video, but we'll see. Just to look during the day, as you can tell, this piece of glass here I have, I kind of want to stay away from it. And it's a tinted piece of glass. And in the daylight, now you see the spring. That's one. I gather the other one is not far, so at least I found them now. Okay, found the springs. Uh, I'll probably include the video that I gave my friend because I was asking him, where'd you put those springs? And being I put them myself. Anyway, um, this uh, particular setup here, pain in the neck, but this is the way I set up the, um, you know, let me just re reposition the spring, and this is off. Ow. Tell you what I'm doing in a second. Okay, so I just repositioned the spring. You want to get it. I think they usually put it right over the hole, and then this hole is exposed. But I, 
if you put it, you try to make it equal on the other side, but I, I always end up falling like right here on the edge of the other hole, which is fine, or, you know, if, usually they're not both in the same place, they're just slightly off, you know. So this is what I'm trying to aim for. Um, cause it's a weird angle cause it kind of goes in like this, you know, um, control arms don't go straight in, you know, uh, what else did I, yeah, so I avoided the fun part and that's lining up these bolts, got them in, um, cause anything that's easy is always harder than it seems. I'll show you what I, how I get the springs in using this big bar and this, but I take the, um, that fork out of the, um, the kit or if it's an older kit, it usually has another set of these on the top, and then you gotta disassemble it, and somehow get it through the bottom. I put it through the shock bolt, and I go to town with it. <clears throat> so, I suggest using an air one, because it'll mess up your cordless gun, no matter how good it is. This is gonna take a while, so I'm gonna make another video with it mostly up. And if you see the video, I'm not dead. <laughs> so, it, it tends to want to come out. I, I kind of go like that. Rah! And the whole car is moving. <laughs> it's not actually hitting the jack stand, the way everything worked out. So like I took when I um, I took the old rubbers out, I forgot to buy new ones. But I bought these springs a long time ago for a different car that I didn't use. So that's why I had a hard time finding them and whatnot. But um, ultimately, I just reuse it. I put tape, I wrap tape around four sides of it. But sometimes that rubber is off center, and that's why it kind of goes like that. Also, you know these these uh, these things are a little weird. Don't forget to oil your threads, like you see these penetrating oil uh, drip dripping here. So, you start going like in like this, and I really have more to go. I'm probably gonna wait a while. Hang on. So, I catch that on the spring pocket, that way you can't really mess up. You know, like you can't, it can't, you know, go sideways out of there or something like that. Hang on. All right. So ultimately like that. See, the other side, I wasn't hitting this rubber piece here, which I don't want to hit it really. Um, you have to end up prying it a little bit. And basically the way I did it, I, I set up the tool first, slide the spring in, and I grabbed the lowest point with barely any threads there, and then, you know, because it, 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 it could keep falling out if you don't make it tight, and then you tighten it up a bit. Now, this is a little funny when you, it gets funny anyway, but rah, the whole car is moving. This doesn't help me too much. Um, let's... Let's jack it up some. Hmm, it's right on that. Mm. Right. Mm. Two times I hit my fender. See, ultimately, I kind of want to get it in and then it falls into the pocket. 
but right now it's touching that rubber piece, which is not really that good. Huh. So that's not really good, but I'm, I gotta use two hands here. I guess I can kinda, uh, let's see. Can you see my foot? That's the spring. Hmm. See what I just did? It goes. And now, boom. I really hope that came on cat. Uh, oh boy. It actually pries a lot easier than you think. And, oh, and look at that! I'm kind of, I'm kind of far. I'm, I'm a tad further away. Oh, I don't like that. I shouldn't have been that far away. Son of a bitch. Well, huh? Let me just make sure. Yeah, that's. I mean, it's in the spring pocket, but it's not really ideally where I wanted it. But it's... Uh, actually... It, oh! The spring just moved. It's, it's closer than it was. Let me see. Let me put the light on this. That kind of sucks. I, I really wasn't paying attention to that. See how this guy here... Yeah, you can see the second hole. All right, right there. I'm like right there. Like they had the, they always cover one of the holes. I never quite understood. Because one hole always gets rusted and covered up with uh, you know, rust, and <laughs> ultimately, or shit. You have a better chance of draining the water out if you got two holes open. But this is in the spring pocket better. Something tells me that it may not be so bad. Yeah, it's almost like... Yeah, I mean, it's... I want to say three-eighths of an inch, not even a half an inch off from where the other one was. I can't really... I mean, I can see, but for some reason I can't... I gotta... Use the camera as my eyes. Of course, it's not focusing now. I guess if I go closer. That's the hole right there. Uh, can I go here? Yeah. yeah, that's the hole. That's the hole. Hmm. Uh, I'm curious what happens if I unwind it, if it'll move a little. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't seem like the other side as much, so I'm going to give it a try. Uh, how far off the jack stand is this? Let's lower it a little. Uh, I've had to move them before when I wanted to get them closer, but, uh, you know, I know it's going to go in, so I'm probably just going to redo it, but you get the idea, you know, I was re maybe now I can actually do the pry bar thing again and kind of set up the camera a little bit better. I think I tightened it seemingly more now, I repositioned it, and as you can see, this is really where you want it, you don't want to pry it as much as I tried. Um, I really wonder if I can just do it with this big screwdriver now. Yeah. So, ultimately, he got two hands here. Well, right there. Okay, the whole car went up. Put a little load on it. It won't slip right in. 
and looks like it's gonna be close to it. Yeah, let's see how most of it just went in. And I am right about where the other side is. Yep, boom. Boom. Yeah, I'm exactly where the other side is actually. And see now, because of the, the range of motion, Yeah, that's right on the money, right where I wanted it. So now, what I did on the other side, I put an additional jack stand over here to make it safe because you got to disconnect, you got to disassemble the um, uh, the tool in there and drop it out the shock hole. So, I think the car is going up, which is normal. Yeah, that's that's a whole step there. So I'm gonna raise that, because it was actually teetering on that anyway. And I'll lower this down a little bit. That rear one is also a little funky. Let's see how that is now. Car really lifts up at the end. Okay, so yeah, you, you want to take that bolt and screw it all the way out. Oh, I didn't get it all the way out. There might even be enough room to uh, get it out, even though the jack is underneath. Oh, this bolt cuts his hats. Let's see. Skinnier screwdriver. Yeah, so what I was doing with the, you know, repositioning the, uh, the thing, I mean, if you got it on wrong, you're allowed to make mistakes. I know it's a pain in the ass, but then you gotta live with the springs in a certain place forever then, you know? I'm not an engineer, so I don't know if that part is a little bit stronger, that's why the end is supposed to be there or whatnot. But, uh, this is the big part of the job. Glad I got it done, it's getting late, it's close to seven o'clock probably. Not after, uh, 6.32 actually. I'm sure my neighbors, I mean, I still can't get that fucking tire on. I, oh God, I'm gonna have to take it to a place. It's kind of like, <laughs> I built my own prison and now I, and now I wanna live in it. You know, I keep, keep I, I waste it all day. But, um, what did I come here for? Oh, I came here for another jack stand. Uh, I'm running out of jack stands. <laughs> I got this car on two, I got mine on four. And now five and now six. Six jack stands on this car. So hold on up back. Control them because I'm not going to get to putting the upper ones. And I'm really thinking about, like right now, taking off the rotors. And as much as I want to buy new ones, I really like the quality of the original ones. And I, I did these brakes before. And I believe the rotors are not so bad. I'll probably use them as is. You know? But, uh... That's not really ideal right there. Hang on. It would have been better to have a sm the smaller ones and put these jack stands under the car. 
Yeah, I don't want to mess that up, Jackson. Jack is a little bit too close for comfort. I ended up putting it. Let's see what happens when I go like this. Now, I can maybe very carefully reposition the jack. Here we go. That's so I can read it. And then I can also jack it up more. Ooh. I just don't like to touch the control arm. Let's see. It's kind of standing up in the air right there. And I lower it. That'll be fine. The same thing. I left those loose. You want this thing to swing. Obviously, you won't be able to lift it up, but you leave it loose, you get it down on the ground, you tighten the, the top ones, and you put, tighten the bottom ones. Alright, hopefully this car doesn't fall. Is this loose? That is not touching the car. That's interesting. Um, yeah. You know, this, this guy in the back here is sagging, that thing moved, it's barely on. It's not easy when you got rocks. <laughs> it's like, Mike, like, Mike, you put a car on fucking rocks? How like it actually works? They kind of like interlock with each other and it stops the car from, you know, but eventually it'll, it'll start to sink in. Sometimes it don't. It depends, you know. It depends on the jack stand. It depends on, you know, how everything is. But I got a whole bunch of kids running around here too. But uh, they know to stay away from my stuff. They're not mine. So. If they were my kids, they probably would would get involved a little too much. So, that being said, that was pretty successful. And I'm happy with that. I'm happy I found the springs. Oh, yeah, I ended up buying a brand, you know, a rebuilt steering box. Advanced Auto had one left in one store. And I think with the 15% discount code, I got it for like... $142 plus uh, tax. I could have got it for like $100 on Rock Auto. Like $92 plus shipping plus tax. So shipping was like only $11. Bucks. So like it would have been $115 versus $142 plus tax. Close to $160, I think. And then, uh, Paid more than that because I had to, you know, have to give them back the core. But I, I bought the the seal kit, and I'm like, you know, in the back of my mind here with this thing, I always felt it was a problem because I never cared for the Hydro Boost brakes in this car. But because I had, you know, two other cars with this Hydro Boost setup, I didn't quite trust it. And this fluid was really dirty when I first got it. I did flush it out a lot. And I was thinking about changing the bottom seal and that seal. That one looks like it was um, starting to sweat. This one really wasn't leaking. Um, so I got to get off these hoses. But um, it really, I'm beginning to think there may have been cross leaks. So what happens is the cross leaks, they cancel each other out. And being that it's um, going into the Hydro Boost, you know, you have a pressure line going in and then a re uh, I don't know if to do it two see both pressure lines from the pump and from this guy go into the hydro boost. I'm not quite sure how it works, but I have a feeling that if there's cross leaks in this, then the hydro boost doesn't work as good. And it always felt like as if and it wasn't like the pads and the rotors, you know, like warped. It always felt funny when you hit the brake, like it kept backing off on you. And of course the belt keeps getting loose. That's another, you know red flag so I'm like you know what if this I don't know how to rebuild these things I don't want to I don't want to try it it doesn't pay for me anymore I don't care at this point it was twenty dollars for the kit I'm gonna return it you know for twenty to one hundred and fifty for a whole bunch of peace of mind and I don't have to do it because I mean what I went through in the control arms there I mean yeah I didn't spend the money but I wasted all day and you know, I paid for all these parts a long time ago, and a lot of these bushings, they're up in price now, but they were probably only $5 a ball joint and $5 for each set of bushings. 
you're really not talking about a lot of a lot of money. You know, I bought the cheap stuff because I know it works. You know, it's fine. And you know, though, but if I had to pay it locally in the store, it's like eighteen dollars for the set of bushings. It's uh, you know twenty five thirty dollars for a ball joint. Then sixty five dollars online, of course, for a for a control arm seems like a no brainer. Yeah, so I'm, I'm I might just take off these rotors. I'm, I'm, I'm almost positive that probably not too bad. But you can see they weren't contacting actually. This rust on the end, the original GM ones. So I don't know. I, I'm uh, I have a complete money pit. So like, it still costs like fifty bucks to cut these now. Twenty five dollars a piece, if not more. He charged me twenty five dollars a drum, uh, twenty dollars a drum. So I think the rotors are twenty five. But uh, I had them cut once before. Like I said, they're probably still fine, you know. But this rust starts to infect everything, and that's why you see the pitting here. Like the car doesn't doesn't get driven for a while. The next thing you know, that's what you get. I think because it's American made, is why it lasted as long. But this one had a really nasty, um, you know, pulsation. So it took a bunch of cuts to get it straightened out. And it's very possible. It's just it is what it is right now. So I bought a cheap set of pads. I was thinking I'd just put them right on there. And the only thing I'd have to do is do a proper brake job, but I got new um, calipers, new brake hoses, new brake lines. It should still technically stop. Like the hydraulic part it should not be an issue. And there really was not a pulsation, but you can tell it probably really wasn't contacting, you know, equally everywhere here. And uh, who knows if it'd still be pitted, you know, after you cut it. And it becomes a waste of money. So I shall see. At this point, it's like, I, I know there's new bearings in here. So those I can reuse and probably new seals. Um, no minimum thickness. 965. I only have a vernier caliper. I got a micrometer too. Huh? But, um, yeah, this is a bit fun. So, I'm, I'm going to, this video is going to be, I don't know if I can do it all on one video or everything I've been doing, but, um, it's kind of like two different things with the injectors and whatnot, so I'm debating how I'm going to go about it, but uh, when I edit it all together, I'll make a decision. Yeah, those things are old. It, it just doesn't pay. <laughs> and now I'm starting to think about the rotors, you know, because you know, if I put them on as is, it's fine. I just slap. I have. I only have cheap pads. So if I bought new rotors, then I want to buy new pads. So I might just throw in the pads the way they are. Cause now it's really starting to hurt money wise. <laughs> so wish me luck. I, this is gonna be probably the end of whatever video you're watching. Thanks for watching. Uh, everything new, and it kisses the ground mainly because of these rocks. And every time I keep jacking up a different part of the car, they move a little bit. Wow, the whole thing went sideways and went up, went up like two feet. That was scary. I was laying under this thing before <laughs> doing the brake cable. Ah, always fun. Got the car all done. Rides great. I mean, unbelievably great. And it actually rides good despite having an engine in the back there. That's why even with cargo coils, it's not sitting low, but it's sitting just right with this. And I expected it to sit higher in the rear, but with the weight, I can see why not. Still have a couple of things to do to it. Um, we just got to get the vinyl roof done and the uh, alignment, because the alignment was far off, but it, it just drove and rode amazing, if that made sense, even though it was out of a line. And... Uh, I gotta change the, the uh, speedometer cables, there's two of them, because the cruise control thing broke, and I got a new one, I put it in. Um, it, it starts great, you know, not much smoke now. Before, it would actually stall, and you gotta keep your foot on the gas a little bit, you know. But uh, it's, it really, really changed the way the car looked. And I just made a video like this to end the, you know, to end everything, and, uh, in the end, I was like, you know what, let me make it landscape so I could see the whole car in, in the video because I kept, kept going like that, and that, that doesn't help me. <laughs> so anyway, um, 
just really, really happy. And now I have to go on to the next project, and I got a Ford transmission I got to do uh, on a Comet. And um, that's going to come up in the next few days. All right, so this is the end of everything. I, I don't know if I'll put this in two videos or one video, but thanks for watching either way.